Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to install Nextcloud in a container here in 2024 using Ubuntu 24.02, the newest LTE release of Ubuntu. The first steps we're going to need to take in order to install Nextcloud in a container is to get our container template. In order to get our container template, we're going to log into our Proxmox web interface. As you see, we already have. Then we're going to head to to wherever we're storing container templates. In my case, it's going to be the local drive. Here, we'll select container templates and then we'll press templates. Now we're going to enter Ubuntu and that'll show us all the available Ubuntu images. Once again, as I said before, we're going to use the newest LTS version of Ubuntu, the 24.04 and we'll press download. We can go ahead and close this screen at this point. We'll see here in our control bar that it's in progress. If we want to go ahead and view the details of the in-progress operation, we can click on the control bar and it'll bring our window back up. I'll return to you when it's finished to show you more steps about how to install Nextcloud in your Ubuntu container. Now that our container image has been downloaded, we're ready to continue on with the process of creating our Ubuntu container. We're going to go ahead and close out this window if you haven't already done so now that we see task OK. Now that we're back at the main web interface, we can go ahead and click Create CT and give it a name. We'll call ours Nextcloud. And we also want to set up our password for our root user account inside of this container. Pressing Next, we're asked to select our template. My template's going to be stored at local. You may not have to change your storage location, but if you do, that's where you do so. And for your template, we'll have to select the 24.04 template that we downloaded just a moment ago. Pressing next, it's going to ask us to enter the disk, and we probably want to give it a good size disk. I'll give mine 100 gigs, even though that's probably a bit small for most people's NAS usages. Pressing next, we're going to be asked to enter the number of CPUs. I like to enter two for a container like this and the amount of RAM. I'm going to give it 2048 for RAM and we'll leave the swap size at 512. Pressing next, we're now asked to configure network settings. We would probably want to have a static IP address, so let's enter an IP address now. At the end, you notice that I applied a slash, and the slash 24 is the CIDR notation for a standard network that most people would find in their house that goes from 0 to 254. Now that we've entered our correct IP address, configured our bridge correctly if needed, and entered our gateway IP address, we can hit next, and we'll use the DNS settings from our server, so we'll press next. Next, and then we're asked to confirm. Confirming will press finished and Proxmox will make our container. Now that we have task OK, we can go ahead and close our window. And with our container made, we can go ahead and start it up. And then we can view our console either by clicking console right here or by clicking console right here. Clicking console right here will oftentimes give you a separate window that you can view and move around and work with. The console right here will be integrated into your web interface. Our first login will be with root and the password that we set up when we created the container. Now the first thing we want to do is update this image and make sure that everything's installed. Let's do that with an apt update and then we'll string it with two amper stamps and a apt up. Great, and we'll add the dash Y. There's no need to use sudo here because we're logged in under the root user account. Pressing enter, this will execute, and I'll be back with you when this process is finished. With Ubuntu fully updated, let's go ahead and shut it down by entering shutdown and pressing enter. Now we can head to resources or options, and then we can click on features, edit, and we can turn on this FOSS and press OK. Now going back to our console and we can start it. With our container up and running, we'll log back in and then we're going to use apt to install snapd and we're adding the dash y so it'll automatically install and won't ask us if we're sure we want to install. Now that we have snap installed, it's time to use snap to download Nextcloud. We're going to do that with a snap install Nextcloud. And sometimes we just have to reissue this command because we get an error message. So let's press the up key 
and enter again. Now Nextcloud has been installed, we need to do some configuration. In order to do this configuration, we're going to use the command Nextcloud manual install, as shown right here. And we also want to tell it the username, which we'll use VE, and the password, which I'll be using test. Pressing enter. It will take a few minutes for this step to run. What Snap is doing is actually doing the installation process of Nextcloud. I'm going to return to you when this installation process is finished and show you the next steps. Now that the manual install has finished, you can see that we've returned back to the command line and it's time to give Nextcloud the OK to communicate with us with our IP address. <clears throat> By default, Nextcloud is set up to block anything for incoming messages other than that of a known domain, and we have to give it the known domain so that we can actually communicate with it. The first step I'm going to do is run an IPA and find out what my IP address. In this case, it's going to be 192.168.3. 150, but it may vary and it's definitely going to be different for your network. Now to give it the OK, we're going to execute this command, nextcloud.occ config colon system colon set trusted domains one dash dash value equals IP address. And the IP address, of course, is going to be the one that we just discovered of 192.168.3.150, and we can press enter. At this point, we should be good to log into our next cloud, and our login credentials should be that that were set up during the installation process. And there you have Nextcloud set up and running in an LXC container on Proxmox. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial about how to get this going in 2024, and you found it useful for your personal projects. As always, have a good night.